Welcome to the Story Fulfilled podcast, where we deep dive into how each character and story in the Bible come together to fulfill the story of God. I'm Abby. I'm Jay. And I'm Fletcher. And today's story is about Ruth. Ruth. I nice. like her. Yeah. Ruth. Babe Ruth. No. Um, cause baby she's a babe. Because she's a babe. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not the baseball player. Anyway. My baby gosh. Ruth is a chocolate bar. Baby Ruth is a chocolate bar. I think. Is yes. it based on Babe Ruth, the yes. baseball it's player? It's got to be. I think it so. It have to be. Yeah. Uh, one, of, be? one of two women who have a book of the Bible named mm-hmm. after them. Yeah. Which is, that's she's fun. Cool. So, our question today, if you had to leave your home country, where would you go? So, is this like to where would you live? Or? Yeah. Okay, not It's where would you visit. live, not visit, because they, they had to leave their country, right? Yeah. They had to run away. I mean, we'd, all, later, like, we'd all like to visit certain mm-hmm. places. Yeah, yeah. Or... Okay. I need to think now. Somebody else go first. <laughs> Jay has an answer, I think. Oh, uh, oh, I don't... I mean, there's... There's a whole world I know. to choose There's a from. lot. It's like, and and what are the criteria? What is it about the the place that you would go? Do you have to live why? there forever, or is it like for a season? For... Just like okay. I think, just like Naomi did. Okay. For a season. Huh. Okay, I have an answer then. I think. Okay. Okay, um, I think I went to Guatemala a couple of years ago. Interesting. And I loved it. It was I I, I would go back in a heartbeat. And I think I could live in Antigua, Guatemala. So I think I could do that for a season. Or Panahashel, Guatemala. Okay. Yeah. It was inexpensive to live. It was beautiful. The people were very kind. And I love Spanish. All right. Look at all those that's, reasons. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to give all those well, reasons. And it, I actually, I felt safe the entire time we were in Guatemala, even though we got lost in the jungle. But I still felt safe the entire time. So... Yeah, okay. we could do it. We do that one. All right, go for it. Uh, okay, I have two places, and for the same, the same reasons. <laughs> Spanish? <laughs> no, not same reasons. You like I Spanish? Have two, I have two places, and because they both fit into a, a similar reality, uh, and I'm going to say, and you have to guess what the reality is. Then you're going to guess what the. Uh, I'm going to give you the two places. You okay. guys have to figure okay. out what the why. Real, why it is. What's the draw? So. Um, Southeastern Australia. Interesting. <laughs> or Northern California. Mm, wine. And I'm just no. joking, guys. Isn't that where no. they, I think they make a lot of wine Northern in Northern California? California. I don't know a lot about Southeastern Australia. I thought you were going to say I South think Korea. I think it's Southeastern. And it was for the, uh, for the hot dogs. Uh, so the, the region is New South Wales, which is, I think it's. Okay. I, don't it's know, I don't know a lot about Australia. that. But Northern California be. has mm. some really big trees. And mm-hmm. Redding, California, you like Bethel Church, obviously. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Um, oh, and Australia, Hillsong, it's mega churches. It's you just want to be part churches. of mega churches. Be, mega churches. Yeah, so it is. It's southeastern Australia is New, New, South, New South Wales, Wales area. Um, so you are off on... You couldn't actually be further from... <laughs> Uh, the truth in what you have said and suggested. Uh, okay, I'm just. You're gonna, gonna have to tell us. I have no idea. I had a good guess. So in both places, you can use the beach and, and snowboard. Ski. Yes. Okay. okay. So Fair enough. the the fact that I would be able to, and it's only for parts of the year. It's not all year round. I don't but think that there's a both. place that you could do. Both mm-hmm. all year round, that would be insane. Well, that's what I like about Canada is that we have nice There's hot options. summers and cold winters. Cold There's winters. options. Like I don't, I don't love the ocean because I've been stung by jellyfish. Oh. And I'm like, I just, why don't we just swim in fresh water right. and have a great time? No risks. And Australia has the deadliest jellyfish, yeah. the little and peanut spiders, and, right? and the deadliest animals in general. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, I feel I like your kids, especially Nathan, who likes to go after little creatures. Oh, yeah. In Canada, totally he's safe. He can no, pick up anything in Australia. here and in Australia. Oh, but he boy. Would, he'd be like, hey, Dad, look what but I found. And I'd be like, no, get it away. I'll kill you. Yeah. yeah. Was Nathan? No, it was Wes. Never mind. At they the both. youth rally. They just oh, pick up animals the, everywhere. They got yeah, bit by mouse. the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my goodness. So yeah, but maybe I think it's Australia, just because Nathan wasn't around. He would have. Yeah, yes. Yeah, but here's the thing. I think that that eliminates Australia for your family because it's too your dangerous. kids like animals too much. Yeah, but that'd be fun. That'd be all it's a scorpion. Do you hear that, Nathan? <laughs> your dad wa- thinks you're going to be fun Nathan be walking down there. the road hand in hand with a kangaroo. Oh and my gosh, they're aggressive, man. Down the- yeah. I think Northern California in the pouch, might be, be in the pouch. Northern, Northern California. There no kangaroos go. in Northern California, though. There you go. Too bad. Ooh. Yeah, see, oh, that's, a, that's I didn't even think. I should have been thinking while you guys were uh, <laughs> discussing Wait, let's guess Jay's mega churches. Fletcher wants to go to Iceland because he wouldn't Ooh. be the shortest, tallest yeah, one there. Yeah, I'd, I'd wear a men's like medium yep. <laughs> because everybody is large Viking. And you, I've that's actually, where you got engaged. Iceland would would be up there, not permanently. I don't think but I'd for want, a season. For a season, for a season, I could live in Iceland. Nobody there. It's small. <laughs> they speak English. Now, do they have their? Uh, they their have decent sunlight food. Sunlight and darkness is they similar do. to the Arctic Circle. Yeah, yeah. Like, in, in winter, yeah, it's yeah. always nighttime. Yeah. So that that kind of sucks, but it's oh, not forever. It's only for a season. Only it's true. for a season. It's true. I just have to do it. A summer season. A summer <laughs> season. <laughs> Great northern light shows, right? Yes, they're beautiful. We went, and it was raining the entire time, yeah. and then for about twenty minutes there, we got to see the northern lights. And that's and when was, he proposed. It's true. There we go. So I'll go get married in Iceland. To be fair, I don't think Fletcher's all that romantic of a person, but your proposal story is the best proposal story I've ever. So, heard, come so. On, clearly, I'm be pretty darn romantic. romantic. <laughs> <laughs> if it had to be permanently, I think it would be the U.S. just for cultural stuff. Right. But I don't know where in the U.S. But right, I just realized Iceland. Texas. We're gonna have Texas, to. Yeah, we're gonna have to fit in a question about engagement stories at some point. But yeah, that's that's well. A oh, we should have done it today. Right. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Cancel this. <laughs> cancel the show. Restart. Re-record. Uh, no. Tell us your engagement <laughs> Do <the> story. <laughs> so our, no. I'm happy. Oh, when are we gonna tell another marriage story? We'll figure though. it out. Don't worry. Oh, no. Oh, oh well. Mary and Joseph. Okay, I see the song. Let's 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 get this show on the road. Holy cow! Wow. So tell us. We'd love to know. We want to hear. If you had to leave your home country, where would you go for, for a season? season. Not, it doesn't have to be forever. <laughs> and it just where would you love to go? Of course, as always, we do encourage you to read the stories for yourselves to get the whole picture of what is going on. And today's story takes place in the book of Ruth. Wait, no way. The book, the person Ruth, the book, takes the person. place in the book of Ruth? Ruth, Ruth is in Ruth. Shocking. Yeah. Uh, okay, last week we talked about one of the most famous, famous judges, and that was Gideon with his trumpets and torches, and he was defeating the Midianites and freeing the Israelites once again. And now we're moving out of the book of Judges and on to the next book, which might not be next chronologically, uh, chronologically mm-hmm. which is an important thing to know when you're reading the Bible. Um, but it is the next book that we read in the Bible, and it's named after its main character, as Abby has already spoiled for us, which is <laughs> Ruth. <Just me? laughs> and uh, and as this book is unfolding, we see that Israel is going through a famine, uh, and there's a man named Elimelech, and he is from the tribe of Judah, and he's from Bethlehem. And he decides to move his whole family to Moab in order to escape the famine. He brings his wife and his two sons, Malon and Kilion, and they ended up settling there in Moab. Mm-hmm. So today's story is in the book of Ruth, like wow. we've said. We Big said surprise. I think if anybody's <laughs> opened a Bible to like the table of contents, they've seen Ruth. Now they know that Ruth is the main character. <laughs> so we've, we've taught you one thing, if We're nothing so else. Helpful. That's right. Um, And it actually takes place after uh, Judges in order. But like Jay has said, timeline-wise, it takes place during the time of the Judges. Mm -hmm. The first verse in Ruth is during the time of the Judges. Right. And so if you look at a timeline of what's going on, it's probably taking place around the 1300s BC uh, during the Moabite oppression, um, right around the time of the Judge Ehud, who we talked about a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And so the the Moabites are enemies of Israel at this time. Um, but if you go back and actually and read, I think it's Genesis 19, it talks about the story of Lot, who is Abraham's nephew, right. and how Lot's children end up founding uh, the, the countries of Amorites and Moabites. So they're actually descendants and relations of Abraham, but now they are enemies of Israel. Right. Go. So the story is taking place in 
uh, Bethlehem, south of Jerusalem in modern-day Israel. Bethlehem. Are we foreshadowing something here, guys? Hmm, maybe. Hmm. Skip to the end of the story to find out. <laughs> and uh, Ruth is from Moab, which is the opposite side of the Dead Sea from Israel. So it's in modern-day Jordan. Absolutely. So, like we've said, um, Elimelech has taken his family, he's taken his wife Naomi and his two kids, Malon and Kilian, and they have moved to Moab. Now, shortly after leaving, Elimelech dies, and it's too bad. So now Naomi is a widow, and she only has her two sons left, and they actually end up name, uh, marrying women, two women named Orpah and Ruth, and they were Moabites. Mm -hmm. And I think we've talked about this before, but the Israelites were not supposed to marry foreign right. people, foreign women. And that was not for race reasons, but that was for cultural reasons. Yep. Um, they would end up turning away from God. And we see that happen over and over again in the Bible. Yep. So it, it was a good advice. And now they've married foreign women. Um, and 10 years goes by or so. They're still living in Moab. And now Malon and Killian have died. So maybe they were sick like their father. I don't right. know. They end up dying as well. So now Naomi is left with these two girls, her daughters-in-law, and no husbands, they're all widows. And so they hear that the famine in, in Israel and Judah has subsided, it's gotten better. And so they're like, okay, we'll move back to Judah. Mm -hmm. And so on their way home, um, Naomi kind of realizes there's nothing for you back in, in, in Israel. I don't have any kids of my own that I can marry you off to. Nobody's going to marry yeah. you. You should go back to your homes and go marry somebody else and, and live out your lives there. Right. And so they all start crying because they have to leave each other. They've been together for over 10 years, right? Yep. And so Orpah ends up going and leaving. Uh, but Ruth actually stakes by her and, and says this very famous verse in Ruth. Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Uh, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you stay, I will stay. And your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Uh, wherever you die, I will be buried by your side. And may the Lord punish me if I allow anything but death to separate us. Strong words. Strong words. And so Ruth ends up following Naomi all the way back to Judah and, and lives with her there. And they arrive around the time of the barley harvest. Mm -hmm. And so um, they arrive and, and everybody goes, oh, Naomi's back. Naomi's back. And she goes, oh, don't call me Naomi anymore. I'm, my name's Mara. And it right. means bitter because right. God has put a bitter life before me. And so they've arrived with nothing in Israel. Right. And no means no means to get, to anything, get anything either right yeah. so they're they're widows they're alone and now they're back in a homeland that they've been gone for at least 10 years yeah now we we want to point this out one of the laws in deuteronomy it's in chapter 24 and it says that any grain that is missed at the harvest can be picked up by the poor the foreigner or the widow mm -hmm. and so ruth goes to naomi and says can i go uh, pick the extra grains that have been that have been left over because she's all three she's all three she's a foreigner <laughs> she's a widow and she's poor yeah. and so naomi uh sorry ruth goes and collects grain behind uh behind the the workers of a field and it turns out to be a, a field that belongs to a man named boaz mm -hmm. and boaz happens to be a relative of of naomi and elimelech so Boaz notices uh, Ruth working in the fields and asks his workers, who is this girl? Who is she coming and, and working in the field? And so they tell him, you know, this is Ruth, the Moabite that came back with Naomi. It's uh, Elimelech's granddaughter-in-law and Malon's right. widow. And so Boaz goes over to Ruth and tells her, you know, grab as much food as you want. Take all you need, uh, anything you want. If you need water, go get water. If you need food, come get food. Don't go anywhere else. Come gather wheat. Yeah, oh, sorry. It would be barley at this time. Come gather barley anytime you want, as much as you need. Yeah. And so Ruth works there all day and, and gets as much as she can, and she brings it back to Naomi. And Naomi goes, "Where the heck did you get all this food? Where'd you get all this grain? You've, mm -hmm. you've been only gone a day." And Ruth, says, oh, I'm, I'm been harvesting at this man's field. His name is Boaz. And right. Naomi, goes, oh, Boaz, Boaz. He's one of your closest relatives. He's he's our family's redeemer. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, oh, thank goodness, thank God for Boaz. He's, he's helping us and he's saving us for the sake of your, your husband and for the sake of our family. And so uh, Ruth continued to, to work in Boaz's fields and was allowed to work there. And Boaz treated her all nicely and told all his men, you know, treat Ruth with respect, treat Ruth nicely. She's going to be working. She can get as much food as she needs. Now, eventually... Naomi kind of tells Ruth, okay, it's time for you to go find a husband. You, you're going to need somebody after I'm gone. I got to set you up. 
And so she comes up with this plan and she tells Ruth to go take a bath, go put on some nice perfume, go put on your nice clothes. And what you're going to do is you're going to go over to Boaz's field and there they're going to be working, uh, threshing the wheat. So they're going to be cleaning the wheat from the chaff, separating the grains, working. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go there, wait till he's, he's done working, wait till he's eaten dinner and he's gone to bed. And then you're going to sneak up to him and you're going to take his, his blanket and you're going to cover it and you're going to lie at his feet. And so she goes and she does, puts the plan into action. She goes over to Boaz and, and sleeps at his feet. Mm-hmm. And then in the middle of the night, Boaz wakes up. What's, what the heck's going on? Who's lying yeah. at my feet? Who is this? And of course, me. there's no <laughs> there's no lights at this time. I, I, I always think of like old stories. Oh, they flick the light on. Right, right, there's right. no lights. He's no. working in the fields. Yeah, it's dark. He goes, "Who's lying at my feet?" And Ruth goes, "Oh, it's your servant Ruth. I'm here uh, and I'm lying with you." And so, what Naomi had said is, "As soon as you do that, Boaz will know what to do." And so Boaz says, "Oh, Ruth, you've been so loyal to your family. You've been so loyal to Naomi, and now you're being loyal again to me. You're picking." me over some younger or richer man right and so uh he said i'll, I'll take care of everything and it there just happens to be a little problem one of your relatives is actually closer and has the first chance to redeem you and so i have to go get his permission before mm-hmm. i can marry you mm-hmm. and so a redeemer we talked about this in season one this is a, a way big throwback but if yeah. you go to deuteronomy 25 uh it talks about a man if a man dies and leaves his wife and doesn't have a child, then the man's relative has the responsibility to go and have a child with them in his name right. to redeem the family so that the line can continue. Yep. So in this situation, uh, Malon and Elimelech have died. They have no more males in the family, nobody to continue their line. And so Boaz now is going to take that responsibility, but there's somebody right. closer. So Elimelech's closer relative is now has the responsibility to take over the family line and, and continue it. Right. And so Boaz is like, okay, I want to take care of this. It's going to be no problem. So Boaz is all excited and tells her that she is, you know, all loyal. And he goes to the city gates. And now the city gates are actually where people did business back in the day. Mm. And so he goes, he goes, all right, let's meet with this man. So he calls uh, the relative over. We don't get his name. Uh, And then he calls over 10 witnesses and he says, Naomi is going to sell her field. Do you want to redeem it? And so what would happen is Naomi owned the field, right? It was her husband's. Mm -hmm. And when they had left Moab, they had sold it off. And there was this whole Jewish thing called the Jubilee. And basically they could only sell it off temporarily. Eventually it would always come back to their family. And that was, you know, to keep the land in the houses of Israel. Yep. And so Naomi owns this land, but has nothing to do with it. She she can't farm it. She's all alone. She's a widow. She needs somebody to help her out. And so Naomi's going to sell this land. Um, Do you want to redeem it? Boaz is giving the offer to the relative. He goes, of course, I'd love to redeem it. No problem. I'll do that. And he goes, okay, great. Good job. Uh, You'll also be able to take care of Naomi and and marry Ruth and redeem them. And he goes, Ooh, oops. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. And he backs out of the deal and he says, this is going to risk my inheritance. This is going to risk yeah. my, my, my fortune. This is going to risk everything. And so Boaz is like, oh, okay. So then I can do it. I'm the next in line. And he goes, yes, yes. Take Ruth, take Go Naomi, take the land. It's your responsibility. And yeah. so Boaz, what they do is they trade sandals. I think we should do that. We should. Th- now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To make deals, we you should do that. trade our it shoes. Would, it would get yeah. real stinky in this I'm room really quick. Any <laughs> deals with Fletcher. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, so they would trade trade sandals to make deals, just basically to give proof. And so they said, in front of all these witnesses, you know, you allow me to redeem them. And he goes, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So in front of the whole town, in the city gates, Boaz has now successfully uh, acquired the land and promised to redeem Ruth and Naomi. Mm-hmm. And he has a new player of sandals. And, and yeah, well, sandals. one of them. He had to trade his other one. So now he has <laughs> right, a stinky right. from some other guy. It's uh, mix I hope he has an extra pair. pair. Yeah. Anyway, so now Boaz goes and he's able to invite Ruth into his house and he marries her. And it actually says that uh, God opens Ruth's womb yeah. and allows her to have a son. And so the women of the town actually go over to Naomi and go, you know, praise the Lord. Um, who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age. For he's the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. Mm. So they've acknowledged how 
gr- good Ruth has been to Naomi yeah. and are now so excited. And, and Naomi actually takes care of this child like it's her own son. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, Ruth and, and Boaz have this son and his name is Obed. Yeah. And we'll talk about his descendants in a, in a little yeah, bit. As you but, say, he has a son who has a son. And that son is quite important. important yeah. mm-hmm. yes. And yeah. that son has a son and a son and a son and a son and... A son and Yes, we'll talk about that. <laughs> 42 generations. 42 generations oh, no, later. that's Abraham to Jesus. 14. 14, 14, 14. Yeah. 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Ruth was unlikely because she was a Moabite. This is true. She sure was. Because she was a woman. Yeah. And any other thing else? Why she was an unlikely character to this job? Well, not only was she as a foreign woman, not only was she a, a Moabite and a woman, she also was widowed, so... Basically, once you're a widow, you have very little options to go, to go with. And so her best option at the time was definitely go back to, to Moab with her with, with Orpah right. and figure out a different life, get married again, and, and settle in her own land. And, and find a redeemer in her own culture. Mm-hmm. Because um, Boaz, like they're not, they're, they're not the Related. same culture, right? Yeah. They're not actually related and so um it was naomi who needed a redeemer Mm -hmm. who ruth um ended up being in that role where she was redeemed which redeemed naomi Mm -hmm. uh through um through the relationship with boaz because yeah if naomi had gone home by herself she was old she and she was widowed wrong. and she had nothing to her name yeah. and no reason bitter. for anybody and she was bitter and she'd lost yeah. everything she she had no options and no chance of right. trying to redeem her family her elimelech her husband had no nothing going for him yeah so his family line was going to end if yeah. if ruth hadn't stepped in yeah. and you know became and, and, her daughter right and so naomi why i was saying it like she it it would have been no problem for her to just leave and go on her own and mm-hmm. she would have done nothing wrong in, in doing that. But she stepped into mm-hmm. to that role, which was of great cost to her. Mm-hmm. Um, she left everything. She to left go with everything. Naomi. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But because she was obedient, she was greatly blessed. Yeah. And mm-hmm. taken care of. So how does this story lead to the rest of the fulfilling of the story of God throughout the Bible? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that redeemer piece is humongous. Um, because and and this is what I like. We read we read about Jesus as our Redeemer, and sometimes we don't understand what that actually means. But it's tied very closely to this idea of a Redeemer, which was not um, exclusively a Jewish thing. Like when I mm-hmm. like um, if Ruth would have gone back to Moab, she would have needed to be redeemed in that culture as well. This is a, a patriarchal society structure that is in place uh and so because israel is a a patriarchal society uh in in this time it it applies to them and so but what we see is boaz steps up and as the redeemer and that's of great cost to him as well um but we see that 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 concept is played out in humanity with God and with Jesus and God sends Jesus to redeem his household. The household is actually the name for families in, um, in, well, in, in the Jewish culture, but in the near Eastern, uh, cultures as well. Um, and so the redeemer of the household was the, the patriarch of the household. And so God as our patriarch has stepped in and redeemed us out of our place of poverty and need and like we are unable mm-hmm. to provide for ourselves mm-hmm. and he steps in and makes it so that we are provided for and and redeems us and, and like you said he does it at a great cost and yeah. you think okay so the, the the closer relative why didn't he just redeem uh ruth and and, and naomi yeah and you think oh because it would have cost too much he had to now take care of naomi he had to now take care of ruth he had to yeah. take care of all that land and take that risk upon himself yeah and basically give up 
some of himself to help them. So right. it wasn't just an easy thing. Oh, I'm going to make more money because I have more land. It was, right. they had new responsibilities and new things to now take care of because of that. And so yeah. now we think of Jesus as our redeemer, the sacrifice and the cost that it cost him was yeah. his life. And so we didn't have our inheritance from God and now he has redeemed us. And now we can fulfill that yeah. inheritance. And, and, and that's it. The redeemer had to do for the redeemed the things that the redeemed were unable to do Mm -hmm. on their own and and that is true about salvation uh which is why we call jesus our redeemer Mm -hmm. and and we've been restored to his household as as a result of that which Mm -hmm. is just it's so cool and we see there's there's other glimpses into what redemption means that we see throughout uh the old testament as well um but this is like just glaringly obvious and as we've alluded to, the Redeemer comes through this line, mm-hmm. uh, which... We, we were a little saucy with it earlier, but we, we it. can. We, I guess we can say it outright now. Yeah. So Ruth, um, or Boaz, let's say, was the son of a guy named... Uh, oh, what is it? Salmon. Right. And has Boaz. And then Boaz marries Ruth. And then they have a son named Obed. Mm-hmm. And Obed is the father of Jesse. And then Jesse, famously the father of King David. Yeah. And so King David was, in a sense, a, a savior of Israel, and, and he was the greatest king of Israel, right? Mm-hmm. And then if we know that David's descendants end up being Jesus, the ultimate redeemer. Yeah. And so through this line of redemption that had to be redeemed, we yeah. also get our redeemer, Jesus, right? Which is so cool. So cool. There we go. Yeah. There's some genealogy. One there. last thing before we go. I wanted to, I thought of this kind of while I was reading is, well, in the New Testament, Jesus talks about how he didn't come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill it. And we mm-hmm. see that, you know, that the idea of redemption is, is a big part of the Old Testament law, and that has now been fulfilled in Jesus. Yep. And I think of the Old Testament, we look at it, we go, oh, this is so harsh, this is so brutal, you know, this is really hard to obey. And in, in all those ways it is, but it wasn't an evil thing, and it was actually good. And we see that God had set up his law so that the poor were taken care of, so that the widows were taken care of, so that the foreigners were taken mm-hmm. care of. And and even in all their hardships and, and with death and loss, families were able to be redeemed and their names could continue. And so God set up this perfect law, or perfect in that time, perfect yeah. law that could be continued and, and that looked look forward uh, to the ultimate redemption that came through Jesus. So I just found that really cool that we can see the positives of the law too. It's not all yeah. negatives. Yeah. And that, that ties into, we also talked about Sabbath and Jubilee. Mm-hmm. Um, there was an, in, um, in the law, there was supposed to be a year of Sabbath every year, every seven years um, where they didn't work. They just lived off of what the Lord provided. And then that year of Jubilee where um Everything was supposed to be returned. All um, any debts that were held were forgiven, and the the poor were cared for in that way. Not even just cared for; they were actually given back land, which would provide for them means to provide for themselves. Um, and and that's what a picture of rest is, because you can let go of all that you've um, earned and collected by saying the Lord has actually provided for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so out of our, like when we are actually resting in God, what that um, bubbles up in us then is generosity. And so I just think that's a great um, reminder for us as believers. We say that we are living in rest, that like we, and Hebrews talks about um, kind of the, the heart of the Sabbath law to be, um, resting in the finished work of, of Jesus. And that needs to spur us on to actually being generous and uh, holding what we have with open hands mm-hmm. and using it to glorify God. There you go. A little application for little you application. too at the end. Yeah. Good there save. Go. All righty. All right. Well, that concludes today's episode. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. Bye for now. <laughs>